man, I just... This will never get old. I could watch this crystal change all day, every day. That is so awesome. I absolutely love that. But anyway, I guess it's time to get this video started. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. As always, I am Cause. I'll be your host today. And the topic on everyone's mind this week is obviously the reset. We're going into season one. We are counting down the time to get into Nurabar Palace, and I cannot wait. So TikTok, let's go. Let's get this reset done. By the time this video is out, we would have already been in normal and heroic raid. So I am excited. I hope you guys are just excited as I am. But let's quickly recap. What did we do in yet another preseason week with only heroics? So really, what did we do? We leveled a little bit. We worked on our professions a little bit. We did lots of farming. We continued our underrot troll farm. And I will talk about all of these things quickly. So let's jump into the video and start talking about my main character, which I had to ensure that he was high enough item level to go, go directly into raid. Our guild requirement is 585 item level. So last week we finished the DA, the DK at 580.56 and going into the reset and into raid, we are looking at 585.63. So I did reach the required item level. It was really just upgrading my weapon. This took the longest. I ran out of Valor Stones. So all week I was kind of doing any world quests and stuff that gave Valor Stones and then also just doing world quests to farm and the weeklies etc so that's where the dk is at i'm excited to get him into raid i'm looking forward to see what he can do and i've been super excited to play death knight since beta so i'm just really excited to get into raid to get into some mythic zeros and really see how everything it feels compared to what it was like in beta right because i did play beta i'll post some videos in the description down below and also an info tag at the top right you should see that now click on those if you want to check out some of the beta videos what my thoughts were on them they're not guides but they are just kind of walkthroughs of here's the fight in its entirety to the point as far as we could get and so you can take a look at that some of the other things we did this week now remember last week we had a mage and a chamois that we were working on i haven't really touched them this week i kind of did some world quests the the and the events but i didn't really touch them for item level i focused more on their professions we'll get into that in a bit but what i did do is i did mention i want to actually get all of the tanks up to level 80 unfortunately i wasn't able to accomplish all of the tanks because it's about nine hours of leveling uh but i did manage to get my warrior done so my Volpira warrior is now level 80 i did also get a uh cult I decided on a Cult Tyran Druid. So that's the Druid you see here. It's a Cult Tyran Guardian Druid. And then we also got our Alliance Demon Hunter up to 80 as well. So there she is. So I've done those tanks. All that's left now is the Paladin. So I'm going to actually make a video for you, for everyone to show, to show how the tanks felt going from leveling dungeons into heroic dungeons. Now I have played each tank in heroic and each tank in throughout leveling, obviously. So personally, when it comes to leveling, it doesn't matter what tank you play. They're all unstoppable machines. You can pull everything to the boss and you will just lived the weakest one surprisingly was the monk it felt like it struggled a little bit when if you pulled everything because it's like it wasn't getting enough stagger enough orbs and you weren't healing enough so it felt like you were a little squishy at times so you can pull as big so that was but once you hit heroic in the monk and got like the 560 i level it balanced right out so there's no challenges there demon hunters were just absolutely unkillable some of the insane pulls i would do i couldn't believe that i just lived with no challenges whatsoever it's like i took no damage i thought warriors were a lot of fun demon hunters took no damage whatsoever druids were very similar to that as well with the amount of self-healing they were doing and then warrior kind of the same thing because there's so much physical damage in the dungeons you can just pull everything and just ignore all of it ignore pain was a godsend it was so much fun the leveling was a lot of fun it's very long and tedious it was about three hours per level well, I think my best was like three hours and seven minutes. And this is also depending on the queue times. It's very often that you'd queue in to ha half a completed dungeon. You would have the dungeon queue pop up and then someone would just sit the whole minute and not take it. And then you'd have that happen two or three times. Overall, each tank when it comes to leveling was a lot of fun. All of them are very powerful. They do a ton of damage. Going into heroic, kind of the same thing. I think right now, Monk does a boatload of damage. They were fantastic in heroic. Obviously my DK, I'm just, I'm excited to play with all the grips and pulls and controls. Uh, Warrior is one of those where like if you go into heroic you just don't have as much control you don't really bring anything so it's a lot of fun to play but you're just not bringing much to the group right so it's a very fun and engaging tank to play and then we have the guardian druid now the biggest thing with the guardian druid is my complaint in all of dragonflight was that the guardian druid feels very clunky like that is the best way to explain it, it felt like a class that just wasn't well 
built. It felt very slow. The ability didn't feel like they were re like reacting very well. So going into the War Within, the leveling experience on my Guardian Druid actually was really good. I was really surprised at how efficient and how well the Guardian Druid felt. Like the abilities were hitting well. Like, I don't know how I would explain it. It just felt much smoother than what I remember. So leveling the Guardian Druid was actually pretty enjoyable. And I may actually play him a little more going into Mythic Plus if they continue to perform this well, because he was a lot of fun. It just reminds me of those glory days of Shadowlands. Like the Groods just did a ton of damage, a ton of healing, and they were unkillable. And that's kind of the experience I got even in Heroic. So I may actually play my Druid a little more as like kind of my secondary tank. And then lastly, we still have the Paladin. Uh, I did start the Paladin. It's all, like almost level 71 so she's got a long way to go I'll, i don't know if i'll get that done this week going with the season opening and i have the other tanks to focus on i may try to get them each through some of the mythic plus and dells just to get at least some sort of a vault and some gear upgrades on them so most of them are sitting at five between 565 and 580 so they're all ready for mythic mythic zero that shouldn't be a problem um, and then on each of my tanks because they all have different professions and some are just gatherers um i definitely spent a lot of time working on my professions one thing i want to do is ensure that the warrior is my alchemist and the one thing i want to do on him is ensure that that throughout this expansion i'm able to create the potions that i need because you lose them ever so regularly every five minutes you're using a potion because they're combat potions so i want to make sure that he can make as many as possible so i've heavily been focusing on collecting herbs one of the things that is part of this expansion is there is a spot in hallowfall where you can actually go plant seeds and these seeds will, will turn into herbs and then you can just farm them so a couple nights this week the guild that i'm a part of actually put a 12 person group together and we went around and started planting the verdant seeds and spawning herbs and we did that for about an hour each night so i was able to collect quite a bit of herbs for the warrior across multiple characters plus as i'm just flying around doing the weeklies or doing some world quests i would stop and, and farm whether it was herbs or whether it was uh or i made sure to stop and do both so i did collect quite a few mats so i was able to get his alchemy up high and i did actually find a tempered potion so i can actually make my own tempered potions now and then i can make the flask but not at rank two so i'm holding on to my concentration and making the potions only when they can hit rank two because that's what is required for raid and that farming spot is actually very beneficial you can get so many herbs from there it was, it was actually really cool to do that with a guild the other thing i focused on is i didn't realize that you could actually buy the profession gear from the auction house something that i haven't been doing on my professions especially in uh, that i did throughout the week is actually i went and bought all of the uh, profession gear that you can get so the different accessories and the tool i didn't realize at first i was going to get someone to craft them and then someone actually said why don't you just buy them on the auction house they're actually pretty cheap and they were correct so what i've done is actually i've gone and i've purchased all of the different accessories and tools that you need for each of my specializations for each of my professions and i just get them from the auction house so right now each of my characters have their herbalism their enchanting tailoring jewel crafting and all the items they need to craft any of the pieces that i need to make in any of my professions and lastly, let's quickly talk about the elephant in the room, which is me still farming under rot and still not having the mount. So last week we ran it on basically all of my alts, which is quite a bit of 70s right now. And I believe we started at like 340, 345 ish attempts. We end up finishing the week at around 367 attempts, maybe 370 and still no mount so at this point like underwater is a troll next week i'm gonna you know what at this point i'm not giving up i'm gonna go through it again next week and i'm gonna do and i'm gonna do underwater on all of my alts again and i'm getting the mount because i am not at this point i am so far gone into that dungeon that i just can't stop and i won't stop so i am getting that mount at some point and when i get it i'm gonna jump for joy i hope it's on stream and other than that, really, just throughout the week, I've honestly just been enjoying the game. I still continue to fly around and do world quests and see different cool zones and different new scenery. So there's just, there's so many things that I'm still just enjoying and exploring about the game. And that is just on the outdoor content. Now, when Mythic Plus start, starts, I may not be in the outdoor world as much. So really, you can just sit around, fly to the dungeon, go do it, etc. You know, but with that, we're going to see some of the old dungeons come back, such as the ones from Shadowlands. So we'll be over there doing a couple of them. So we'll get the re-experience of those. I'm actually looking forward to that because the zones in all of World of Craft are not bad, right? I still very much enjoy just flying around in the more within and picking up mats and enjoying what i see and taking my time but jumping into what the plan is for this week um, obviously the raid is coming out the mythic zero dungeons are coming out and we raid tuesdays and thursdays we will be streaming our raids and then shortly after i'll be releasing the kill videos for you guys most likely the same night it just means it's gonna be a couple of late nights for me to get these out to you guys 
hoping to try each of the tanks I have at 80 to see how they feel and get a video out just talking about how they feel in Mythic Zero and my predictions going into Mythic Plus, how certain tanks will handle it, whether it'll be good or bad, what their deficiencies are. So I'm hoping to get a video out for you guys with that. And then we are going to try to get as much gear on each of the tanks as possible through Mythic Zeros. Maybe I'll get into a pug raid. I may add an additional stream day this week just because it's the release of season one. We've got to get this out. The title of these episodes will also change because now we're going from the preseason week two and we're going to go into season one week one. So that titles might change a bit. It may be a little confusing, but I am looking forward to what this week has to bring. The War Within has been fantastic so far. Let's jump into the season. Let's go kill some raid bosses. Let's go see what this is all about. I hope you guys are excited as I am. I hope you're ready to jump into Mythic Zeros, into the raid, whatever it is you're doing. I hope you have a blast doing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.